Hello everybody, this is the video for Module 2, Building a Database and Defining Table Relationships. I'm going I'm to continue to do the review assignments, which are, this one is found on page AC105. That's AC105. The data files that are needed for today are the uh, vendor database that we worked on for chapter number one. So make sure that you have that available, as well as a file called supplies.xlsx, which is an Excel worksheet. That can be found on Blackboard under student files. You'll want to find that and save that to a location that uh, you will be familiar with when you get to that step and you will need to use that workbook. So if you need to, please pause this video and retrieve those two items and we'll be all set to go. When you are all set to go, you can just continue playing. So I'm going to go ahead and read the opening paragraph for this particular exercise. In addition to tracking information about the Vendors Riverview Veterinary Care Center works with, Kimberly also wants to track information about their products and services. First, Kimberly asks you to modify the necessary properties in the existing supplier table in the vendor database. Then she wants you to create a new table in the vendor database to contain product data. Complete the following. Step 1 says to open the vendor database that you created in the previous module slash chapter. So I'm going to go to my desktop where I have that database that I worked with for Chapter 1, and I'm going to open it up. And when I open it up, I see the four things that we created during Week 1. By the way, I just clicked Enable uh, Content so that I can actually work in this database without any difficulty. And you'll see that I have the Supplier Table, the Supplier List Query, the Supplier Info Form, and the Supplier Details Report. We will be using the supplier table first. But we've got the database open, so we've already done step number one. Step number two says open the supplier table in design view and set the properties as shown in figure 2-45. Now, what we did last week, or excuse me, I say last week, but last chapter, is that we worked in data sheet view where we actually saw the data and entered data. We never really had a chance to go to design view. So what I'm going to do is if you double click on this, it will automatically take you into data sheet view. So let me go ahead and do that. And I'm in data sheet right now, data sheet view, because this is the view that you actually see your data. But they want me to work in design view. So on the home ribbon, over to the far left, we have this triangle, pencil, and ruler, and the word view under it. If I drop the arrow down, this allows me to go to design view. Design view, we do not see any data, but we do see the design of the table and the fields that we are using in this table. And if you recall from the first chapter, we made all of the fields a short text data type except for the initial contact that we made date and time. Each one of these fields has separate properties down here. So if I change the properties for supplier ID and then I click on company, I'm going to see completely different properties down here. So each field has its own set of properties. And that's what we're going to address today in the step number two, where it says, and set the field properties as shown in figure 2-45. So if you're not having a chance, you might want to have the book open to page AC105, but I will also walk you through this. For supplier ID, so you want to make sure that you're on that row. You don't want to be way down here on phone. You want to be on supplier ID so that when you change the properties down here, you're changing them for that field. So supplier ID, they say make sure the data type is short text, which it is. The description, we're going to add the description of primary key. It is simply a description. As you can see up here at the top, it's purely optional. 
You do not have to have descriptions, but if you're working with somebody else on this database and they're not sure that that is the primary key, it doesn't hurt to put some descriptions down to help that person. Okay, the default for all short text data types is 255. That means it, it, it is allowing you to type up to 255 characters. Well, for a lot of these things, that's ridiculous. I don't know of any state in the United States that's 255 characters long. I don't know of any city that is. So we want to adjust these field size to be more reasonable. It would be like working in Microsoft Excel and having a column really wide for a two-digit number. Obviously, that doesn't make much sense. Plus, it takes up and makes your database a lot larger than it needs to be. So that's what we're going to do today is adjust a lot of these field sizes. So it's telling me that the field size for supplier ID should really be a 6. That's more reasonable. Now, also, just to let you know, if a user is typing a field size number, I mean a supplier ID number in, and they try to type a seventh digit, it simply won't let them. It will literally stop them at six digits. Okay? Caption. Down a little bit further down here in the field properties, we have a caption row, and we're going to call this supplier space, a space bar ID. We're going to put a space in the caption name. We're leaving the field name without a space, and we're actually putting that in there. A caption means that's what the user is actually going to see, even though it is really named supplier ID. All right, we're done with that particular one. Now I'm going to go down to company. Company in the, in the figure that I'm looking at, figure 2-45, says make sure it's short text, which it is. Change the field size to 50. So I'm going to delete the 255 and put in 50, and that's all they want me to do on that particular field. So I keep making my way down. Category is short text, it is, and a field size of 15. So again, I'm going to delete the 255 and put 15 in. That's all I'm going to do on that one. Address, again, short text. This one is 35 field size that 35. Again, that's all we're doing on that one. So I make my way down to city, make sure it's short text, it is, and change this one to 25 field size. State, short text. This one we're only going to make two because it's going to be the abbreviation of the state instead of typing out the entire state name. Okay, move down to zip. Zip is also short text, field size of 10. Okay, so again, I delete the 255 and replace it with 10. I come to phone. Phone is short text and a field size of 14. And on this one, they also want me to add a caption. So I go to the caption line here, and they want me to type, type in contact space phone. Okay. I click on contact first, short text. They want me to make this one a field size of 20. And this time this caption gets contact space first space name. Okay. Contact space first space name. Go to contact last. Short text, it is. Make this a field size of 25. And the caption, they want me to put in contact last name. Last space name. All right. For initial contact, our last field in this particular table, it says make sure it's date and time data type, which it is. I come down here to format, and they want it to be short date. So all the way over here to the right, I've got a drop-down arrow. All the way to the right, a drop-down arrow. And it gives me different options, and they want me to pick short date. Short date. Okay? And the caption for this one, they want to be initial space contact. Initial space contact. Now step 
three says save the supplier table. So let's save all of our hard work. Now this message that comes up is not actually an error message. This is just a message to say, hey, you've changed the facts, you've changed the rules after you already have 25 rows of data in there. Is this okay? And I'm going to say yes to this message. And uh, if I read the instructions for step three, it says save the supplier table. Click the yes button when a message appears indicating some data might be lost. Switch to datasheet view and resize columns as necessary to their best fit, then save and close the supplier table. So I'm going to go back to, uh, I'm going to make sure I save it one more time, and then I'm going to go to datasheet view. And we do that by going to this button all the way over to the left um, that says view on it again. If you're not seeing that, you may have accidentally clicked on a different ribbon. You want to be under the Table Tools Design ribbon. And we're going to go back to Datasheet View. And they want me to resize all of these columns to their best fit. Now, I could just come between Supplier ID and Company and double click. Okay, and it expanded out a little bit because of my label being a little bit wider now that I've told the caption to have a space in it. Um, or if you want to do them all at the same time, if I click on Supplier ID, I'm putting my pointer right on the word Supplier ID, and I'm going to click, and then I'm going to go over to Initial Contact and hold down the Shift key on my keyboard, Shift, and click there, and they all get selected. Then I'm going to go to the far right edge of Initial Contact, and I get a line with two arrows. And at this point, if I double-click, it will resize all of my columns as necessary. Now, for some reason, it did not do the last one, so I'm going to double click again. Huh, that's interesting. Okay, I'm going to manually bring it out just a little bit so that those pound signs go away. The pound signs indicate that the column is not big enough to display everything, so I'm manually readjusting this one. And I'm not sure why it did that when I double clicked. It should have done an auto column fit, but no problem. We can adjust it. Well, you know what? They're all messed up. I don't know what happened there. Uh, let me try that again. Click, select the last one, and then double click here. Why didn't that work the first time? There we go. Well, it's still, look at that. It's still, okay, I'm going to click to deselect everything. And I'm going to move this out manually again. I think the problem was before I had all the columns still selected. Um, there we go. Save and close the troublemaker. Okay. There we go. All right. Step number four says create a new table in design view using the table design shown in figure 2-46. So we're going to go to the Create ribbon. If you recall, every time you create something new, that's the ribbon we want to go to. And we're going to click on Table Design. Okay? So I'm following the figure on page AC105, and it says the first field name should be Product ID. So I'm going to type it just as I see it in the instruction, Product ID with no space. The data type, they want me to make it short text. Notice that that's the one that comes up by default, so I just leave that alone. The description, they want me to give it primary key. Okay. They want me to make the field size 5. I'm just following the directions here. And the caption should be product space ID. So I type product space ID. Okay. Next field, so I go to the row right below product ID, and I'm going to type in supplier ID. Short text, again, that's the default, so I'm okay there. And for the description, I'm going to type in foreign key. And that will come into play a little bit later. I'll explain what that is, but we'll talk. just go through the motions for right now. This is a field size of 6. And the caption is supplier space ID. 
the third field then, as I go to the third row down, is product name. Again, no spaces. It is also short text. We're going to make it a field size of 75. And the caption is product space name. And the four, uh, I'm sorry, and that's it for that one. The next field, so we got our fourth one now, is price. And this time we're going to make the data type currency. So I'm going to change it by dropping the arrow down and choosing currency as my data type. They want me to make the format standard. So I click down here on format, go all the way over to the right again, drop that arrow down and we're going to go to standard. And then we're going to go to the next line down which says auto for number of decimal places. We're going to drop that arrow down all the way over to the right again and we're going to choose two. Okay. Got three more fields to go. I click under price and this one's going to be called temp control. We want the this to be a data type of yes, no. So I'm going to go over to data type, drop my arrow down, and pick yes, no. What this does is this provides the user a box. And if the box has a check mark in it, it means yes. If the check box is empty, it means no. All right, I go to the caption, and I want this one to be temp, T-E-M-P, space, control with a question mark at the very end. Okay, the next one is I click under temp control and I type in sterile. Sterile. This is also a yes no data type. So I click the down arrow and pick yes no. This one for the caption I want to put sterile with a question mark. Sterile. And a question mark. Okay? And that leaves one more under sterile. I'm going to type in units. Units. This is a number data type. So I drop the arrow down and pick number. So we're going to have short text, currency, yes, no, and number data types in this particular table, which is just fine. For the field size, we're going to change it from long integer. I'm going to go all the way over to the right, and I'm going to choose integer. Number of decimal places. We're going to change it from auto all the way over to the right. Change it to zero decimal places. The caption is going to be units slash case. And the default value, we do not want that zero in the default value, so we're going to leave it blank by just deleting that zero. Okay? Let's turn the page if you need to. If you're watching the instructions here, we're going to be on page AC106. And it says, step five, specify product ID as the primary key, then save the table as product. So what we're going to do is go up to product ID and make sure that we click on that particular field name. Just click with the left side of your mouse once. And we're going to come up to the ribbon up here and we're going to click on the primary key. It literally looks like a key. I'm going to click on that and that puts a key in, the, in what's known as the record selector. These little squares are called record selectors. Uh, and so I got a little key in there to designate that field as my primary key. And if you recall, by definition, a product key has to be unique for each record. It cannot have duplicate values. And it has to be filled in. It cannot be null. It cannot be empty. Now, I'm going to right-click on my tab here and choose Save to save my hard work. And they want me to call it Product. Product and click OK and we will see over to the left we now have two tables the one that we modified earlier today and the second one is the one that we just created okay
Step number six, again on page AC106, says modify the table structure by adding a new field between the price and temp control fields. So between price and temp control. So the way that I'm going to add a field in there is you always want to be on the field below where you want to add it. So if I want it to be above temp control, I want to go to temp control, and I'm going to go to the, to the left of it where I get the black arrow, and I'm going to left click and pick insert row. And that allows me to insert a new field. So let me read the instructions again. Modify the table structure by adding a new field between price and temp control fields. Name the new field weight. So we're going to type in weight as our new field name. Data type is number. So we come over here and change this to a number data type. It says make the field size single. So I come down here to the properties for that particular field which right now it says long integer. I go all the way over to the right, drop that arrow down and pick single. All right, decimal places are two. So I click right here, go all the way over to the right, drop it down and choose two as the number of decimal places. The caption for this field is weight in LBS, weight space in space L B S, which of course is the short for pounds. Default value, nothing, so we want to remove that zero. Then move the units field, I'm still on step six, move the units field so that it is positioned between price and weight. So I want to move this last field units up a couple of spaces. And so this is how you do it. I get the little black arrow when I go to the box next to units and I click to select that row. Then I take my pointer and I put it right in that square next to units and I get a white plus sign. At this point when I get that white plus, or not plus sign, but it's a white arrow. Once I get that white arrow, I click and hold down the left side of my mouse and you might notice that there's a black line that has appeared between sterile and units and I'm still holding down the left side of my mouse. So with the left side of my mouse held down, I'm going to move that black line until it's between price and weight, because that's where they want me to move this particular field. And then I let go of the left side of my mouse, and I have just moved that field where they want me to have that. Okay? So let's go ahead and save our work yet again. I always say save and save often. And now it says step seven. Enter the records shown in 2-47 in the product table. Resize all data sheet columns to their best fit. When finished, save and close the product table. So we have to go back over to data sheet view. That's the only view that allows me to enter data. And I'm going to enter the two records that they have in the figure on page AC106. So product ID is going to be PT100. Tab over to supplier ID. Supplier ID is K L S 321. Tab over. My product name is paper space tape space roll. Tab over to price. My price is going to be $20. My units slash case is 12. My weight in pounds is 3. Temp control is no, so I'm not going to check the box. An unchecked box means no, so I'm just not going to do anything to this box. And the same thing for sterile. I'm not going to check that box because they want that to be no as well. So I just tab down and I'm ready to enter my second and last record. So I'm going to type TCO. I'm sorry, TC, and then it's 050, not an O, but a 050. Supplier ID is QLS002. The product name is Thermometer Covers. Thermometer. 
thermometer space covers. Tab over. The price is $27. Unit slash case is 50. The weight in pounds is 1. Temp control is also no, so I'm not going to check that box. But sterile is yes, so I put a check mark in that box. Okay? It says in the step, when finished, oh, first of all, I've got to resize the columns. So I'm going to try this again. Click on product ID, hold down my shift key, click on sterile. That selects everything in between. Come over here to the right edge of sterile and double click. All right. Made everything so I could see them, including the product names. Then it says to save and close. We definitely have to have the table closed or we're going to get an error message if we do the next step. So make sure that you do indeed close the table. We should have nothing open as of right now. All right, that leaves, what, four more steps. Step eight, use the import spreadsheet wizard to add data to the product table. The data you need to import is contained in the supplies workbook which is an Excel file located. This is the file that I said to have ready um, before you started the video. So uh, if you didn't get it ready, go ahead and pause it now and go out into the Blackboard student files and retrieve the file called supplies. It's a .xlsx file and save it to your desktop. Okay, I've done that. So what I'm gonna do is go to external data and we're going to look for the import link. And right here where it says new data source, I'm going to drop the arrow down. And I'm going to say from file. And it's an Excel file. So I go over to Excel. So new data source from file, Excel. And I'm going to click. And it will walk me through a wizard to help me do this. So what we're doing is we're taking that data that is currently in an Excel spreadsheet and we're going to bring it into access into our table so that we don't have to do all this data entry that we don't really all care for. So let me read the steps for 8. 8A, specify the supplies workbook as the source of data. So right up here where it says file name, I need to click to browse and go find wherever I decided to store that particular workbook. I put mine on the desktop. So I go to desktop and I find the supplies workbook, which is right here for me, and I click open. That's step A. We have to 8A says go find that file and tell me where it is. Step B, select the option for appending the data. We have the first option, which is import, which will create a brand new table. But we want to append because we want to add it to an existing table. So B is saying make sure the dot is next to append a copy. Step C says select product as the table. So if it doesn't say product here, make sure you use the drop down arrow and pick product in from your list of the two tables that we have. We wanted to do this for the product table. Okay, we're ready to click OK here. Takes me on to the next step. Step D says in the import spreadsheet wizard dialog boxes, make sure access confirms that the first row contains column headings. That's going to be on the next screen. So right here, we're fine. Just click next. We want to make sure that there is a check mark in this box, even though it's grayed out. There is a check mark there. So that looks okay. And then it says an import to the product table. So I'm going to click next. Here, we want to make sure that it says import the table product. We click finish, and we're not going to worry about saving the import steps. So I click close, and there's only one way to figure that out, that it worked, and that is step number nine. It says open the product table in data sheet view and resize the columns to the best fit as necessary, then save and close the product table. So I'm going to double click on product. And lo and behold, I now have 51 records. And I know that by looking down here where it says 1 of 51. I got 51 records because I copied all of that data from the Excel spreadsheet. So that's pretty cool. Okay, 
it says to resize my columns yet again. So again, I'm going to click on product ID with my little black arrow, hold down my shift key, click on sterile, and then go to the far right edge of sterile with a question mark and double click. You should be kind of used to this by now. We've done it a couple times over the last two chapters. And that resizes my columns. And it says to save it. Make sure we save all of our hard work. And then close it. Okay. We're on to number 10. So two more steps. Define a one-to-many relationship between the primary supplier table and the related product table. Resize the table field list so that all field names are visible. Select the referential integrity option and the cascade updates option for the relationship. You're all probably going, what? What did it just say? Well, if you recall what I said from week one, all tables have to be related to each other somehow, some way um, in a database. So if a, if a company has customers tables and a and a uh, employees table and a products table and a pricing table. They all have to be related to each other somehow, some way. Kind of like us as people, we're all related somehow, some way if we went way back in our history. So to do this, we're gonna go to the home ribbon. I'm sorry, we're gonna go to the database tools ribbon. Sorry for that little hiccup. And we're gonna go to relationships. And this is where we establish the relationship. How are these two tables related to each other? So we're going to add both tables. So you can either double click or you can click on it and click add. And then we can close this box. Now if you made a mistake, you can always delete these tables. You're not actually deleting them from your database. You're, you're deleting them from the relationship window. So I could do something like that. And then I could come up here to the show table box, bring that back up, and add the right table if I made a mistake. So we've got the two tables there, and part of the instructions say to resize these so that you see all the fields, because right now I've got a scroll bar, which means I'm not seeing all the fields. So if I go to the bottom of my table here, and I get the double arrows, if I click and hold down the left side of my mouse and drag down until the scroll bar goes away, I know that I'm now seeing all the fields. Do the same thing here, go to the bottom edge, get the two arrows, Hold down the left side of my mouse and drag down, and now I'm seeing all of the fields. Now, what you do when you're trying to set the relationship is you kind of look at the tables here, and do you see a field that they might have in common with each other? Product ID. I don't see product ID over here. Supplier ID. Oh, supplier ID. There's the field that they have in common that I'm going to use for this relationship. Now you generally want to start with the, the primary key, which would be in the supplier table. That's what that little key is next to supplier ID, is to say that's the primary key. You take that, you put your pointer right on top of it. And when it's right on top of it, you hold down the left side of your mouse. And with the left side of your mouse still held down, you drag over your mouse until the tip of your mouse is right on top of supplier ID in the product table. You now let go of the left side of your mouse, and voila, this comes up. And just to verify that you've done it right, you want to make sure that it says supplier ID in both of these columns over here, which it does for me. All right, the instructions said to make sure that I enforce referential integrity, and that simply means I check this box. And then it said to make sure that I did the update, so I check that box as well. What that means is if I were to update the supplier ID to a different number um, or a different text in the one table, it will automatically update in the other, which is kind of nice. I click Create, and I have just established a one. That's what that little one means on top of my line. To many, that's what that little symbol means, into this table. As you recall, it can only be a 1 here because it can only appear in that table once because it's the primary key, which means it has to be unique for every record. But this over here is not my primary key, so it can be there many, many times. So you might have a, a customer who orders multiple times during the year. You might have a student who has taken multiple classes in a year. So that's why it's called a one-to-many relationship. Okay? Now... 
The other end of the relationship, and this is something that you might want to make sure you really get ingrained in your head. The first end is the primary key. We know that. The other end of your relationship is known as the foreign key. And that's what I kind of mentioned earlier when we did a, a description. That is your foreign key. So one end is the primary key. The other end of your relationship is the foreign key. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and save this. Don't really need to. It will save automatically. And then I can click the close button here with the X, or you can close it down here. And it is permanently saved with this database now. And what that does is that allows me to use both tables. And I can pull information now from both tables at the same time. Before I did that, there was no way that I could do that. I would have to pull table from one table or the other table. But now they, works, and now they work like one giant table. All right, step 11. Save the changes to the relationships window, which we just did, and close it. So we've already done that. Compact and repair the vendor database. Well, compact and repair means that it literally will do, it's kind of like a defrag on your home computer if you're familiar with defrag where it will clean up your computer and it will actually fix some errors if you have them. So we have the same thing here. If I go to the file drop down menu and I click right here where it says compact and repair database, it literally will make the, the, the data file as small as it can possibly be to function and it will clean things up for me and actually repair errors as well. And you can see how quickly that went. It doesn't take long at all to do that. I'm going to close my database. And that wraps up this video for this uh, chapter two, building a database and defining table relationships. I hope you find this to be helpful and I appreciate your attendance and um, I will be recording chapter three for you in a, a short while. Thank you.